Hi guys. It's Monday again. Hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Um, a happy Passover and a happy Easter. So if you've never tuned in before, my name is Rita. I am the design director for Impress Art and I have a fantastic job. Um, I get to stamp and play with new product and work with the team at Impress Art to design new products um, for you guys. So today we are going to be talking tools and we're going to go through the entire sticker book, the sticker guidebook. So these right here. So these are for cuffs, bracelet sticker guides. Um, you could use them for pendants as well, but they work really, really well with your bracelets. So we are going to go through um, how to correctly use these on both your quarter inch, your half inch, and your 5 8 bracelets. So that's three, these three sizes. Um, I'm gonna walk you through how to bend the bracelet correctly, or if you've overbent, how to correct that as well using the bracelet bending plier. Okay, so again, welcome. Um, what have you been doing in your community to, to make you feel grounded and still connected to community in times like this? Um, we've been talking about that for the last two weeks. Um, I've shared that I stamp and I go for a walk with my daughter, middle of the day, um, breaks up her homeschooling, um, and I drop things in my neighbor's mailboxes. I always uh, pop on Facebook or Instagram in the morning and I make sure to look to see whose birthday it is. And if I could drop something in the mail, I drop something in the mail. Just a little something that shows that I'm still here and I'm connected and I'm thinking about other people that I haven't seen in a while. Um, I know I have a house on the lake in Pennsylvania in the Poconos and I'm missing my lake family. This is the time of year where we would all go and start, you know, cleaning our trailers and getting everything ready for the up and coming season. And we've been doing a lot of hangouts um, with all of us. So I stamped a couple of items and I dropped those in the mail. What are you doing? Just a surprise. Um, letting somebody know that you care and you're there and you're connected and they're doing a good job because it's not easy. Staying home is not an easy task. All right, so that's what we're gonna do today. We are going to stamp some bracelets and I am going to take my samples and I am going to walk around my neighborhood and I'm gonna stamp it forward. So definitely if you're doing something and you're stamping and you're, you're sending it or you made, um, let's say, gifts for coworkers or your mother or your sisters or your friends that you haven't seen, um, definitely take a picture and hashtag us at um, stamp it forward, hashtag stamp it forward and also hashtag impress us. You could do that both on Facebook or Instagram. And I know I sneak peeked a little bit um, of a spoiler of new ultra detail design stamps. We call them our spread love stamps. Um, I will show you some of them when I take you over to my block in a little bit. So without me talking any more than I already have, I'm gonna take you over, I'm gonna start talking tools, we're gonna to do bracelet guides, and I'm gonna show you how to use them correctly with the three sizes, your quarter inch bracelet, your half inch, and your five eighths, okay? I'm also gonna go through our enamel markers. So I'm gonna show you how to use the black, and I'm also going to show you how I mix the black and the silver. Okay, so if anyone missed it earlier, we're gonna work on bracelets. I'm gonna walk you through the bracelet guidebook, okay? In this guidebook, which is oh so fabulous, when you open it up, you're gonna see there are instructions here. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through those. Turn these around. Okay, so I'm gonna use my bracelet here to point it out. So that first line that runs right across, okay? That blue line is what you're going to measure with your with your sticker guide, 
okay? So once you've peeled your plastic off the front, now you can leave your plastic coating on the back. I know some of us like it, some of us don't like it. Um, you can leave it on because sometimes it reduces the marring that you get on the back side of the bracelet. So I'm gonna leave that on today. I always like to turn my bracelet into a diamond pad, my uh, steel block into a diamond pattern when I'm stamping in front of me. It gives me more room, okay? And I also could find my center better. So I am going to lay that. Now, with your bracelet, your sticker guide, do you see those that blue line that runs right along the top? What you're going to do is you're gonna make sure that that blue end is gonna meet up with the bottom of your bracelet. So I'm just gonna place this down here and I will show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so this is for quarter inch bracelets, quarter inch bracelets. So with the quarter inch bracelets, that first line that runs across, does everybody see that blue line? You're gonna make sure that that lines up along the bottom of your metal. Do you see how that blue line is touching the bottom of my bracelet blank? Okay. As long as that's running through across your bracelet and you're lining those two that that up with the ends, you're going to be stamping in the center of your bracelet. Okay. Now with the hash marks underneath, does everybody see those two? The next line is going to be for your half inch bracelet. Okay, we're gonna use a copper one today. And then the line underneath is for your five eighths. Okay, so for those of us who buy items and we don't read, I am not great at reading directions. Um, when I put furniture together, I always have um, extra screws. So that's, that's the type of person I am. So what's great about these stickers is that they also make sure that your bracelet blank is really nice and firm to your block. Um, you can add tape on each side. I just like to add tape because I'm working with a camera in front of me and it's a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna take my stamp tape and I'm just going to put it on each sides of my block. Okay. So I know someone asked before the, the spacing in between. So I'm gonna work with a signature font. I'm gonna work with, let me pull out here. Mm -mm. I'm gonna work with my uppercase stargazer, which is a signature font. Signature font in these black cases means that it's rated for stainless steel. So you can use these for stainless, okay? So in this uppercase set comes with six really nice design stamps, okay? So I'm gonna pop that open. When you're using your sticker guides, you want to, especially with a two millimeter font, you wanna utilize the spaces in between your orange and your black, okay? See those right between? So I am going to put, let's see, I'm just gonna do love, okay? I'm gonna utilize right in between. Now these stickers are great because you could use them um, for quotes all the way through the bracelet, but if I did quotes today, we would be here for a while. So each book includes 36 stickers. So again, you always wanna make sure that when you're using the two millimeter font, you're going to go in between your hash marks. All right, I'm gonna pull out my L. Now, when you're stamping with our product, you always wanna make sure that the impress art's facing you. You're gonna take this down, okay, and lightly, drag it towards that sticker guide. If you have sticker guides at home, if you run your finger down it, you're gonna feel that ledge it creates. So that ledge is there to make sure that when you place it down and you lightly drag it, you feel that restriction, you feel that tension. Once you feel that that tape, you're hitting that, okay? You're going to press down on your stamp Take your hammer, let me move that up just a little bit so you could see that. I'm gonna take my hammer and I'm gonna give it a nice light hit, 
okay? And that's gonna be my L. You see my L is sitting right on top of my sticker guide. I didn't go over the sticker. The sticker created a ledge, okay? And then I'm gonna continue with my O. Again, making sure that my impress art's facing me, I'm going to come down, lightly drag it, feel it catch, give it a nice tap. Now with this font set, you don't have to hit it too hard. Because it's rated for stainless and I'm using an aluminum, aluminum is soft. So you really don't want to give it, you wanna give it a nice light tap, okay? If you give it a heavier tap, it's gonna spread the metal out and you're not gonna have clean and crisp lines. It's kinda of just going to um, blow up your font. Okay, here's my V. Come down, line that up, lightly drag it, feel that sticker, give it a tap. Same thing with my E. Come down, lightly drag it, feel it hit that tape. Tap, light tap, okay? I'm going to pull my sticker off. Okay, and you're gonna see that you're right in the middle there, okay? Just like that. Then you're gonna take your enamel marker. So we had a lot of questions about how to mix the black and the silver. Um, enamel marker. So I'm going to show you how I do the black first. Now this is just a regular household paper towel. Um, nothing, it's not wet. It doesn't have anything on it. I'm going to show you how to apply your enamel. So you're going to take your enamel marker and you're going to run it over. So let us know who you would stamp this, stamp it forward to. This is love. You're gonna take it, you dab it, lightly wipe it. Um, I've been mixing colors, okay? Some people on the aluminum um, like more of a muted black, okay? How I like to change that up a little bit is I take my silver marker, okay? And this is available in different, pa a, a pack of a couple of markers. It's the silver, this color right here comes in a nice brown, like a chocolate brown, a nice patina green blue, and a metal flake gold. Now this is the metal flake silver that I'm using. So then you're gonna dab it and lightly wipe. And you're gonna see that it's not so, this light might not be the best to show it, but it leaves it more of a gunmetal gray. There you go, I think you could see it more that way. Okay, um, not so stark black. Okay, so that's the mixing of those markers. Now, Jennifer asked a question. Jennifer asked that, let's say you are stamping a quote. So I'm gonna put my sticker back on. We're gonna try to wing this. So I could show you exactly what Jennifer's talking about. So sometimes when you're stamping on an aluminum bracelet and you're doing a big quote across it, um, the metal starts to warp, warp. So we were in the center of this bracelet. I'm just gonna continue um, a quote um, to show you what Jennifer was talking about. So let's see, we'll do love always wins. So I'm just gonna continue. Again, you're going to always utilize the spaces in between the black and the orange, those hash marks, when you're doing a quote. So I'm going to place it flat down, lightly drag it, feel that restriction in that sticker. And again, for those who just tuned in, I am not going to Hit it really hard because these are rated for stainless steel and they are nice and sharp. 
So I'm just giving them a nice tap. So when you are doing a quote, okay, and you are stamping down the bracelet, they are aluminum, so they are soft. This does also happen to the brass and the copper. You're forging metal. So metal, it's spreading, it's bending, and you get that really wonky look where it kind of um, bevels at the top. I always, there are two ways for you to fix that. You could use your multifunction hammer, which is my first suggestion, if you have it, and you would use your uh, nylon head. And I'm gonna demonstrate that in a second. Let me just finish this uh, quote. Love always wins. Doesn't it though? Okay, so I'm gonna pull that out. So you're gonna see it starts to bend at the bottom. It's because you're continuing your entire, um, you're, you're stamping your whole bracelet and you're forging your steel stamps into your aluminum metal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and just color this in black again. And then I'm gonna show you how, lightly dab it and then lightly wipe it. Okay, just like that. So you see it's got like a little bevel in it. What you're gonna do is you're going to place it on your block, okay? making sure that you see that empty spot on the bottom because your metal is bending like a rainbow. You're gonna use your multifunction hammer, okay? And you're gonna use your nylon head. And the reason why we use a nylon head is because it's not gonna mar the metal. It's not going to leave an impression. Um, you never wanna use your brass head um, when you're knocking down a bevel. Okay, so you're going to place it down just like that. Okay, you're gonna take your head and you're gonna give it a couple of taps and then you could turn it around and do the same thing. And you see that it's nice, it's gonna be nice and straight now. Okay, that's how you do it. Now with the marring on the back, if you leave your plastic on the back, like I was saying, it leaves very minimal marring. Also, if you're really having a lot of shadowing on the back of your blank, I think you're hitting it a little bit too aggressive. Okay, and what I mean by that is, let me take, let's see, I'm going to take a design stamp, okay, and I'm just going to really give it a nice hit. You're gonna see that, see how it gets wonky? Again, if it gets wonky like that, you're going to put it down, okay? Do you see how it has that space on the bottom? You're going to take your hammer, give it a couple of nice taps, and then you're gonna turn it the other way, and then you see it straight up and down like that. Now, um, I left the plastic on and you know, my, my marring was very minimal. When I took my plastic off and I really aggressively hit my design stamp, okay, not only did I really knock it out of shape, but I also left marring on the back, okay? So it's important when you're working with the signature sets, um, you don't hit them too hard because they are very sharp, okay? Now, um, also, we just had a question Let's say you have that bump at the bottom and your nylon head isn't really working to flatten that out. You could do one of two things. You could either change the head into your chasing head in your multifunction hammer, okay? And then what you would do is you would get where you see that bulge, you always wanna put it towards your steel block because what the chasing head is gonna do is the chasing head you're gonna hit from the top and it's gonna use the, the hit from the top is going to actually use your steel block to flatten that out. So you're gonna put it down. 
and give it a couple of nice hits and you're gonna see it's gonna flatten that completely out, okay? Another way to take care of it is that you could use the buffing block and what you're gonna do is when you see that, you're just going to really just sand it. I'm using the coarse grit. Okay. So with the ultra detail stamps, what you want to do is definitely use that scratch protecting sheets for the back of it. Okay, especially with the ultra detail because you do need to do a tilt and tap. Now, when you're tilting and you're tapping, it doesn't mean that you have to be very aggressive with it. Okay, and then you could take your buffing block and I always go to my fine first and I hit that and you could see how it shines it right back up from using that coarse grit. Okay, next bracelet. We're gonna work on the copper half inch. So I'm gonna peel that. Okay, so now when you stamp on aluminum, I mean on uh, copper, sorry about that, you want to give it more, if you're using our regular sets that come in the colored cases, you wanna hit them a little bit harder than you would, um, let's say if you're using aluminum because copper is a harder material. I'm gonna take another sticker guide and show you. So we went, we discussed the quarter inch, so the quarter inch is where you're going to line up. That line is what's gonna line up on your quarter inch bracelet. With your half inch bracelet, you're gonna make sure that you you are on the second hash lines, okay? On each side of that. So I am going to place my sticker. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that it is lines up, if you could see that, right at those lines, okay? Going to secure it to my block. I'm gonna take my stamp tape and I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a hold on each side with my bracelets. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna change my font. So I'm going to use my Heartbreaker font. Okay, I'm gonna to stick to my uppercase today. All right. Now with my uppercase, I am going to, I want my love spread out a little bit more. So instead of using every, between every hash mark, like we did with the love sticker, I am going to work on my black lines. Okay, so I'm gonna put my L here, my O, my V, my E, okay? Just like that, okay? So remember, when you're working with a three millimeter um, or a two millimeter like we just worked with, you wanna stick in between your lines. When you do something that's a three millimeter, four millimeter, um, five millimeter uppercase, you always want to utilize either your orange or your black lines. Like I said before, you always wanna make sure that the impress art is facing you when you're stamping, okay? That's an indicator, that indicator mark is great because you know that when it's facing you, you're stamping in the right direction. So you're gonna take it, place it down, lightly drag it. You're gonna make sure that, and I'm gonna point it with my pen. So you wanna make sure that you think that there's an invisible line down the center of your shank when you're working with your hash marks, okay? So you just wanna take your letter, your stamp, you want to line that up. You're gonna lightly drag it and feel that restriction of that tape, okay? So you're gonna take it lightly, feel that restriction, give it a nice hit. And there's my L. Bring it down lightly drag it when I feel that restriction in that sticker, okay? Give it a nice tap. Now I missed, see? And I do this every day. 
I missed the sticker. So you really wanna make sure that you place it down and really drag it. It's kind of hard for me with this camera in front, but I am, you know what, let's do another one so I could give you the full effect. Now, this brings me to, if you're doing a bracelet and you have a mistake, okay? Unfortunately, there is no um, magic eraser for metal stamping. I wish there was, okay? Um, what you can do is what I like to do is I always have a scrap piece next to me whenever I'm stamping. Definitely utilize your bracelet. Do not throw these out because now, you know, you have a scrap piece and you can continue to stamp on it or even if you want to practice using a new font. Okay, so always keep that aside. Don't throw out your mistakes. Okay. So I am just gonna put that there. I'm gonna pull the plastic off. I'm gonna leave my plastic on the back to reduce my marring. Here we go, we're gonna start again. All right, remember, impress art always in front of, uh, facing you. I'm gonna bring that down, give it a nice tap. Okay. Here is my O, there we go. Yes, and sometimes mistakes are pretty. Here's my V. And if you notice, I am hitting these stamps harder um, than I did on the aluminum, only because copper is a little bit of a harder metal, okay? So there's my love. I'm gonna pull my sticker off, and you're gonna see that it's right in the middle of that bracelet. So that's why it's so important that when you're putting your guide and you're using your half inch bracelet, always remember that that second notch, that second hash mark on each side of that sticker is where the bottom of your metal is going to meet it. So if you're just tuning in, you're gonna make sure that your, blue, your second hash line see if I could, there we go, um, is going to be hitting the bottom of your bracelet. So then I'm going to take my enamel marker and run that right across my impression. You're gonna make it messy, like I always say, and lightly, lightly wipe. Now, if you're having a problem with your, your enamel, and it's not staying in your impressions, it's one of two reasons. Um, one, your impressions aren't deep enough, or two, you are wiping it too early. So, bending a bracelet. I know someone just asked that question. When you overbend, is there any way to fix that? And the answer is yes. So when you're bending your bracelet, you always want to make sure that the impression that you want on the top of your bracelet is facing the ceiling, okay? It's facing up. You're going to take your thumb and firmly place it on that bracelet bar. Take your hand, bring that right over, just like that, okay? Okay? So it's nice and flat. Does everybody see that? Then you're gonna come back around and do the same thing. I apologize for my hands in the way. Put your thumb, place your thumb firmly up against that bracelet, okay? Never have it on the table, definitely hold it in your hand. Take the palm of your hand and bend that right over, okay? And you're going to have a flat top cuff. Now, um, I like more of an oval rounded cuff. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, and I like my ends knocked in, that's where the bracelet bending plier comes in. So what you wanna do is you want to follow the curvature of your bracelet and you wanna start from the center. You wanna give it a nice squeeze and see how that brings in that entire bracelet. And then you wanna just continue Moving and squeezing. Now look at the ends here and look how that squeezes it in, okay? And it forms your bracelet. So it knocks your ends down, okay? And then you could keep on going around. And at the ends, what I like to do is I like to just take the bottom 
and bends it out ever so slightly. And there is your cuff. Now, overbending. Overbending is easily fixable. Um, when we teach classes, Jen and I, you know, it happens. We even overbend our bracelets sometimes. Um, and I can't even tell you how many of these bracelets I bend a day. So I am just going to take one of the quarter inch aluminum bracelets. So again, I'm going to take my bracelet, put my thumb firmly against it, take the palm of my hands, come over. Now, overbending is easy to do because we're either talking or we're so excited that, so excited that we got to this part that we come over and we just overbend ever so slightly, okay? And then we come back around and we're even more excited that we're bending a bracelet and this is what happens, okay? We get a hump. This is such an easy fix. I always like to call this my magic eraser, okay? When you're bending metal, you could always unbend it. It's not that much of a big deal. So what I like to do is I like to take my bracelet bending plier and remember, you always wanna follow the curvature of your bracelet. So what I do is, I'm gonna to try to move this up so it's not so, okay, here we go. So here's your bracelet. I'm gonna take my plier, okay, right before that bend starts and I'm going to move it up, okay? Just like that. And then I'm gonna come in the center and I'm going to squeeze it. Do you see how that folds it and brings it in? It forms that bracelet and you're just gonna continue around, okay? Now, if it's really dipped like this one is, take it, bend it out. So I'm squeezing, I'm holding my bracelet by squeezing on it, but then I'm taking my fingers and I'm pulling it up, okay? And then I'm going back in and I'm forming it again. So over, don't throw out bracelets that are overbent. You could always correct them. And there we go. Okay. So even if you have, like I said, something crazy, let's say we have that. Okay. And believe me, it happens. Again, take your bracelet, move it with your fingers, and then correct it with your bracelet blending plier. So like I said, this is our bracelet blending plier. It's phenomenal. Um, one of my favorite tools on my bench, and it's always on my bench, okay? And like my magic eraser, like I like to call it, because it fixes anything. You're just gonna continue to bend it, form it with your hands, okay? And that's it. So that is your, so we've gone over the quarter inch bracelet with the sticker guides. We've gone over your half inch bracelet with the sticker guides. Let's see, the next one would be five eighths. Is there a point of no repair? Um, I would say a point of no repair would be, let's say, let's troubleshoot this. Um, if you have a, well, it really depends. Um, it depends on the size of your wrist. Okay, I'm a bigger girl. I like um, more of a space on the bottom of my cuffs. Um, I know my daughter likes it, you know, smaller, but you should always have about an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter, ah, an inch and a quarter, um, or an inch, to, an inch and a half. And then when you're putting it on, you always wanna put your cuff on, on the side, and then bring it over. Okay, and then you could always, these are really easily formable, so you could always squeeze it onto your wrist if that helps your answer your question. Okay, Katie, stamping to a part of a uh, point of no repair. Okay, so a uh, point of no repair would be, let's say we're um, doing a bracelet and you have an L 
and your L really slices through your bracelet because you really overstamp it. Um, I'm gonna take out my willow. Okay, that's my H. Let's take out, you know what? Let's take out my I. And I'm really, I'm, I, I'm talking like really overstamping this, okay? I'm really gonna give that, that's really overstamped. See how deep that is, okay? It cuts through that metal. So stamping and, and, and bending to a point of no return would be something like this, um, where in your bracelet, you have a letter um, that has been straight up and down that's left such an impression that look what happens when you bend it, it cracks in half because you've now cut through your entire bracelet with over stamping um, a letter. So Kathy, <laughs> this is a point of no repair. Um, this is a point where you could then just use it as a scrap piece to practice on. So yes, always remember not to over stamp and then try to bend it because any metal will break in half and this is a very thick aluminum. If you overstamp that, I don't know if you guys could see. There you go. I literally cut through by overstamping my letter. Okay, so this would be a perfect example of a point of no repair. But then to make, you know, lemonade out of lemons, now you have a piece to practice on. So always positive, right? Okay, so five eighths bracelets. These lately happen to be my favorite. Um, everybody always asks me, oh, you know, what what are you using? Um, what are your what's your go to? My go to lately is my five eighth H bracelets, five eighth bracelets, inch bracelets. So I've been using a lot of just plain or sans serif on these. They look great. Okay. I'm sorry if you hear that horrible wind. It's not great outside, so, okay. So this is your five eighths. What I'm gonna use is, I'm gonna use it on Willow. And there is a tutorial on Willow on our inspiration gallery. So if you guys go to impressart.com, definitely sign up for our newsletter, okay? And definitely take a look at our inspiration gallery. Um, we have this project um, done with Willow on a copper bracelet. And I literally just listed a bunch of inspiring words one on top of another. So with this, what size lettering is Willow? Willow is a four millimeter font. Sans serif is the three. And that's an uppercase. That's why it looks bigger. Okay. And what I did is I spaced out my letters with this. But Willow is definitely... It's a four millimeter font, okay? It's a narrow font. It's got clean lines and it has beautiful design stamps. This is another um, font in our signature line that is rated for stainless. Um, the maker is gonna make is a three millimeter uppercase sans serif. Willow is what we're gonna work with. And we're gonna utilize our sticker guides. Now for the last bracelet that we're gonna do, you're gonna see that, I'm just gonna go over this with you guys, that your first line is for your quarter inch bracelet, okay, which we did in the beginning. Your second hash line is for your half inch, okay? And your third is for your five eighths. And yes, I've been I've been rocking the five eighths bracelet. Okay, so what you want to do with this is again, I always if you're just tuning in, I always make sure that my block is in a diamond shape in front of me, gives me more room to work. Okay, and you're going to make sure that when you're working with your five inch bracelet, five eighths bracelet, you want to utilize that last hash mark. on your sticker guide. And I will show you exactly what that means when I get that put nice and even on there. Okay, 
So see how my metal, the bottom of my bracelet is hitting that hash mark, okay? That third hash mark on that sticker guide is for your five eighths bracelets. So you wanna make sure that you're nice and lined up on one side and then on the other, okay? So we're going to place that on my block. Okay, and I'm going to use my tape on each side just to secure it. Yes, these stickers are phenomenal. Okay, and I'm going to do love with this. Now, when you work with an uppercase font um, that's wider, like we did um, with the, let me grab that. This is a three millimeter, but it's wide, okay? We're gonna work with a four millimeter, but it's four millimeters in length, not width, okay? So where we used the, hash the black hash lines on this I'm gonna keep my love close together okay um, the tape that I'm using on the ends is the stamp tape okay so I am going to use the spaces in between with this because it is a nice and narrow font um, just like lollipop is if you have the lollipop font, that's what you would use it right in the center. You just want to make sure that when you're using it, you give a little bit of leeway um, for your W and your M. Because if you could see that, although it's narrow, it gets a little wider at the top of that. So we're going to start. Now, with the four millimeter willow, there's a little trick to this font. Um, I like to rock my stamp back and forth with this one. And what I mean by that, what is the black station under your stamping block? So what I have under my stamping block right here is a rubber pad. This just deafens the noise a little bit for me. Um, your block comes with rubber feet. This is just an added, I take my rubber feet off and this is just an added um, pad for me that it deafens the noise a little bit, okay? So I am placing it down, okay? I'm going to lightly drag it. Now, I tell you that with these signature fonts, you should only hit it once because they're rated for stainless and they're sharp. But this is a four millimeter font, okay? So the way I do it is, I'm gonna lightly hit it once and I'm gonna tap forward and back. So it gets all of that impression in there, okay? It'll get your serifs on the top, it'll get your serifs on the side. So you just wanna give a little bit of a tilt and a tap with this font. And here is my O. Actually, I am going to, I'm gonna get a little creative here. Let's see. I'm not gonna use my O. I am gonna use a little heart. Okay, there's my O. And again, I'm gonna bring my V in, line that up, lightly drag it, and again, I'm going to tap it up, back, and that gets my whole impression of my V in there. Okay, so there is a little trick to a four millimeter font. So you should definitely tilt and tap it. I'm gonna bring my E down, lightly drag it, feel that restriction in that sticker. And I'm going to give it a little tap, front, back. I'm just gonna roll it a little bit side to side and that gets my entire E in there. Okay, so tilting and tapping. Let me grab a disc just to show you because I know my hands were covering it. So I could go through it really quick with you. Okay, so right up here. I'm gonna actually show you from 
a side view of what I'm doing. So I'm going to make sure that the impressor is facing me, okay? And I'm hitting it once and I'm bringing it back, forward, side, side. And I have my full impression. Same thing with design stamps, guys. A little bit of a tip, okay? Head on, tapping it, lightly tapping it front, back, side, side. It gets your entire impression in there, okay? You could tilt, well, some, sometimes you don't have to tilt and tap for your four millimeter and up. This is such a narrow, tall font that I like how it looks when I tilt it and I tap it. Um, and remember, you're not really, you're not aggressively hitting it and tilting and tapping it. Very lightly, very lightly. Okay, so I'll color that in just to show you, just to show you that impression. How did I misplace a black marker that was right in front of me? There we go. Okay. So what I mean by, yes, what, so now four millimeter design stamps and up, if they are, um, have a lot of detail in them, I always like to do the tilt and tap. It doesn't hurt. So I dab it, lightly wipe. So I'm going to show you, do you see that? It leaves a nice and even impression when you roll that stamp. Okay, that's why, oops, that's why it's always good um, to have a piece of scrap near you. So I'm gonna pull that off. Okay, take my love. And you could see that I am literally in the center of that, that bracelet. And play with your stamps. You see that I replaced my O with a heart. There is no rule when it comes to designing. Okay, you're gonna take that, lightly dab it, and lightly wipe it. So this is what I mean by it being a really nice, thin, long font, okay? Now with these five inch bracelets, you're gonna need a little gusto behind them to, um, to bend them. So I am going to show you, first I'm gonna put my stamps back because I'm notorious for losing letters. So you're gonna put that in there, put your bracelet and your bracelet in that channel. Put your thumb firmly against it, use the palm of your hand, and you're really gonna lean into this one. So the thicker the bracelet, the more pressure you have to put on that. Always make sure that when you're bending your first side, you have it at a 90 degree angle. Then you're going to bring it right back around. And really, and I know I hear it all the time that I make it look easy. It is, just don't overthink it. And remember, if you overbend, you could always fix it with the bracelet bending tool, okay? Now, if you like a flat top cuff, which some people do like, you might just want to take the bracelet bending plier and knock in the ends of your bracelet. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna curve in your ends, okay? Do you see how this one's curved and this one's straight? What happens when you leave your end straight, um, it falls off, If it'll fall off your wrists. Um, but some people prefer it, completely personal preference. I happen to like, let me just show you how this bends this bracelet. So do you see that space? It takes that right up and curves it. So you're curving your ends. Okay. So again, we went over our quarter inch bracelet our one half inch bracelet and our five eighths. Okay. 
and we went over exactly how to use our sticker guides correctly, utilizing those hash marks on the sides of our sticker guides and our spacing. I think we did a lot today, okay? So I'm gonna sneak peek what I snuck um, last on Friday. So we came out with a three um, ultra detail stamps, okay? Um, I have two of them here with me because I gifted um, one to someone over someone special over the weekend. So I'm going to show you. All right. These are our new three spread love ultra detail stamps. Is that rainbow not adorable? So this is a little different, this rainbow, that of anything that we've done. Oh, you could see me in there, that metal reflection. But um, you could see that it's got a lot of different patterns in there. And those lines are, they're just to die for. They're nice and clean and they're crisp. And then we have a uh, stethoscope. And we have a heart love gesture, hand gesture. Okay. These are just beautiful. So um, they will be available to purchase on the website within the next couple of days. I just needed, I couldn't, I couldn't bear one more day not showing you guys how beautiful these came out. All right. So I'm going to give you a little tip on how to stamp these. I'll actually use this. Um, with the ultra detail, um, obviously they are detailed more than the usual, okay? Let's see if you could see the detail in that. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that the impress art is facing you, and obviously it's not on this stamp because this was my sample. So you're gonna place it down. Now when you're using our ultra detail stamps, they are sharp, okay? and they have a lot of detail. So what you wanna do is you really want to put pressure on that stamp. Then you're going to hit it once on top, and I want you to do that tilt and tap like I showed you before. And that is gonna get all of your detail in there, okay? By tilting and tapping that stamp, okay? Same thing with the rainbow, same thing with the stethoscope. You're going to place it, really hold it down, and give it a nice tilt and a tap in a circular motion, and you should have all of your impression in that metal. Make sure you sign up for our newsletter because that's when um, we send out, we don't bombard your emails, but we do send you emails with project ideas, um, which are great, and also any kind of flash sale that we're having, or any new product, okay? So, now that we're all pros on how to use sticker guides, so I want you to break out your stamping supplies, and I wanna see you hashtag us. Um, you could do that with hashtag stamp it forward if you're stamping for someone that you wanna surprise. Um, and just let them know that you're still connected and you're still there for them. Or you can hashtag impress us. Jen and I absolutely love seeing what you guys stamp. So definitely, definitely hashtag and let us see what you're working on. We love, we love that. Actually, the whole team at Impress Art loves to see um, what you guys are making and how creative you're being um, because you guys give us ideas. So again, it's hashtag stamp it forward, hashtag impress us, hashtag impress art. Um, thank you so very much for joining us today. Um, it's been great to be able to have this communication back and forth. Um, and I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that you guys tune in every, every day. I'm grateful that Jen is there to put all our, com all our comments and all that good content. And, um, thank you for tuning in. So again, make sure that you comment, like, and share this 
Facebook Live, that would be fantastic. Um, and remember to stamp it forward. Remember to do something that connects you to your community still. Um, and hashtag us, because we would love to see it. Um, I hope everyone is healthy and staying well. And we will see you on Wednesday at one o'clock. Thanks so much. Have a good day.